Hi guys, my name is Ike Obun, a Nollywood actor, producer, born in Just Plata State, I hail from Abia State. And um, I've, I've been an actor for about four years now, four or five years now, thereabout. So far so good, I can say, um, this was not really what I thought it was going to be. Uh, in 2005, when I finished Amsterdam Water Box Office reality TV show, I wanted to come in strong into the industry as an actor. But uh, unfortunately, the industry wasn't just ready to accept me. I mean, there was, uh, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. I went to meet all the producers, I, producers that I knew and a few actors and the roles were not coming. But for me, I'm not a beggar. I don't know how to beg for things. So I decided to just chill and focus on modeling. And in 2013, the game started for me from a phone call from Ricky Sander, who called me to be in a movie called Love Learn. And after that movie, this was one script after the other. We can't forget Elvis Chooks, who also played a vital role in trying to, to grow me as an actor. And today, I look back and it's about four or five years now and I've done a lot. You know, the other day I was trying to the other day I was trying to count how many movies I'd been in and I was counting over over a hundred movies and I know that there's some of some that I've probably forgotten. So I mean the awards, the exposure that it gave me, yeah, I'm only really grateful to God. Um, just recently, last year I decided to go into production, producing, which is the, the business part of showbiz. And um, so far, so good. That's been the hardest part. Production, yeah. Well, uh, my movie is coming out on the 20th. Uh, uh, I want to say my movie, but myself and Nick will found to produce this one. It's called Excess Luggage. And it's coming out to the same as on the 20th of October, which is this month. Uh, we had the private screening just yesterday and the reception was very good. So it's going to be in every cinema in Nigeria. It has Mike Ezuonye, Queen Wokoye, myself, Ike Obona, Nikki Ufondu, that is Mona Lisa Morodion, that is Shafi Bello, that is Fred Amata, that is Derele Edun, there's um, Ebinabo Potters. So it's a beautiful movie that talks, uh, that sheds light and issues that happen in families you know things that people neglect and are oblivious of the fact that it's actually that like cancer eating into the marriage so we try to use comical ways to um, preach and um, more like a wake-up call to people in relationships to focus more on the things happening in their house and not the things happening outside their house The movie was actually produced by myself and Nikki Ufondu. And um, yeah, that's um, my first official production. There's some, on the, some, some in the work right now. We're trying to be making a, a movie against next year. But um, we're just right now the script, the script screening process. And uh, by the time we're done with the scripting, we we'll now put pen to paper and um, start casting and then get it on the road. It's different, so, I mean, but the two really cannot work without each other. I mean, the producers need the actors to act in the movie. Um, the producers, I mean, as a, a producer, it the work starts for you from from conception, from scratch, from getting the right script. For me, the work started from an idea that was born in my head, and then sharing the idea with a beautiful talented young lady Nikki Ufondu and then we came together to make something magical you know so the work starts from there and we had about three four months before production itself putting the script together re-editing the script trying to get the right director for the project trying to get the right um, cinematographer assembling the whole crew casting the right actors to fit into each role so actors you would call would tell you that they're not available at that moment and you just have to get the work going but at the end of the day i thank god that we fell down to the actors that we ended up using because i couldn't have imagined this movie anything better than it is without them and then the work doesn't end when you call cut but as an actor 
The second they say cut, you're done. You get into your car and you drive off. When it's time for the premiere, you come and you chop some popcorn and drink coke. But as a producer, the work continues. You, you're going to the post-production. You're going to be in the studio virtually every day. You know, trying to make corrections, trying to get the right sound score, the right color grading, you know, all of that. And even when the movie is ready, you still have to move about to get to the, to get the right distributors that you want to work with, the right marketers, you know. And the movie is in the cinema, you still have to be working, trying to convince people to come and see your movie. Because, I mean, it's like a product, you have to market it. So the work is non-stop for a producer, for an actor, it's really easy, you know. Get a script, a good script, read it, get on set, deliver, and that's it. Told, um, competition is a mindset, you know, competition is a mindset, it only exists for those people that really want to believe that they're, they're competing against someone or something, because at the end of the day, there's really, really no competition, the industry is very big, in the world you have over 7 billion people, the industry, if you take your time to look at, you know, work being done, if you take the time to look at work being done every now and then, in a day there are over five productions happening at the same time. And if I was the only one, I wouldn't be able to work in the whole five jobs. I mean, I would kill myself trying to move from set to set. So um, um, it still falls down to people um, think, to those people that think they are in competition, you're actually in competition with yourself because it's a mindset. I don't think I'm in competition with anybody. I mean, I want everyone to progress. I want everyone to do well. The other day I was in the I was um at the 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 press briefing of my movie and someone asked me a question that how do I feel my movie coming out at the same time with another movie and I mean I'm I'm surprised that people would think that there is competition cuz at the end of the day every producer produces a movie and wants to make profit so you can you can produce other movies and I told the person I wish the other movie success I wish my my movie success because um, truth is there are seven billion people in Nigeria alone and sorry not Nigeria in the world and when you do a good movie if someone comes to watch your movie at 4 p.m. the person can still watch the other person's movie at 6 p.m. you know so I'm more concerned about bringing out quality, bringing out good stuff. When you see anything that has to affiliate with the IKEA Bona brand, you, you, you class it as a good stuff, you know? And I mean, let the other person brand his own, own stuff good. I mean, let's all just roll. You know, the beauty is one person cannot build Nollywood. Nollywood is a, is a big village and it's a collective effort. We have to have good actors, not just one, two, three, four, as many as possible. You know, the, the more the better, we have good exports. Yeah, you know, um, I love cooking, and the beauty of the beauty of cooking is when you see somebody enjoying your food. And the beauty for me is when I see the person I love enjoying my meal, and you know, she's actually smiling out of the meal I cooked for her. I try to do everything and anything to make her happy, and cooking, cooking is one of them. She cooks for me, I cook for her. You know, it's it's just beautiful as far as I'm concerned. Everyone faces challenges in, in any relationship, be it brother, sister, 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 father, mother, mother, daughter, mother, son. You know, you must always face challenges and how, how you overcome these things is what really counts. You know, there are times we have our down moments, there are times where we, we want to kill ourselves and all of that. But at the end of the day, you know, she knows that she's my friend and I know she's my friend and, and I know I, I'm her friend. And, we have a, a motto which is make me happy at every cost. So my duty towards my wife is to make her happy and keep her happy. Her duty towards me is to make me happy and keep her happy. So if I'm not happy, she's feeling in something. If she's not happy, I am feeling in something. So I try not to fail and she tries not to fail. So we are constantly trying to make each other happy. And when you find yourself constantly trying to make somebody happy, you find out that 
you don't have space or room for negativities. You have a pact like um, for marriage to be successful, which is something I tell people out there. Don't share your issues with anybody, not with your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your best friend. You don't have best friends because your best friend has a boyfriend that is her best friend. And when you share something with, with, with your best friend, he will tell his girlfriend who has her best friend who has a boyfriend and that's how it just goes viral. And human beings are products of the things that they listen to, the things they watch, the things they read. And whatever you read passively that you think didn't sink in actually did sink in and you would not know but when it comes to making decisions you find out that it begins to tell on you you know um i blame too many of the failed marriages in this our age and time this generation to the fact that so many things are let out when something comes out for instance mr a and mrs b are having an issue in their home it gets to the blogs and gets on social media people start commenting you read the comments now when you read comments what does it do to you psychologically your subconscious is affected and it's affected in a way that you cannot make a decision out of your own stable mental state so if naturally I would have a fight with my wife and I would walk out and come back and buy her a gift if it's out there and people are saying oh she's a bitch she did this she did that you know what kind of woman is this it starts working on you so when you walk out, instead of coming back home, what you filled yourself with from the comments that you read begins to affect your decision. And then you find out that too many people don't actually want you to be happy. People out there just want you to be unhappy, broken marriages and all that kind of stuff. So keep your stuff to yourself. Try to express love and post pictures, do all that. But when it comes to those integral problems that you face with your wife, the same way you toasted her alone, face it with her alone and, and get it out of the way. Cheating is not even having sex with a woman. That's one mistake people make. Cheating is when you find yourself developing feelings for someone. Now, let me explain this. Um, if a man finds himself in some situation, you sleep with a woman for 30 minutes, and it's done and dusted, and then you move on with life, that ceased to exist the second, the, sex, the second it ended. You only just broke your marital vows. That's not cheating. You broke your marital vows. Now, cheating is when you start sharing the 100% of you with someone else. Now, I'm not just talking about sex. I'm talking about giving that person extra time, chatting moments. I miss you, baby. I miss you, honey. When can I see you again? Planning trips with this person, you know. But, well, I, I wouldn't say it's been, it's been uh, a movie on its own because nothing really changed for me. I mean, I see my wife as my friend, my best friend. I talk to her about everything. We really don't have secrets like that, you know, and I try to understand how she tries to understand me. We just have um, a child we have to take care of. We have a home we have to build. We have a future we have to build. That's the mindset. But in, on the other hand, you know, we're best friends. We don't, we don't carry that luggage on the head of, oh, I'm your husband, you're my wife, you know, we, we just vibe. You know, we don't do the whole, my wife must cook for me thing. You know, it's whoever feels like cooking, go and cook for the next person. We just show and express love in different ways and in as much ways as possible. Human beings are 90% a product of the things you see, the things you read, the things you watch, the things you hear. And um, when you come to the things you hear, the kind of music you listen to these days do not promote love, hardly promotes um, unity. It promotes mostly sex, violence, and drugs. That's one. Two, um, when it comes to the social media, like I said earlier on, keep your issues with your wife to yourself when you have an issue with your woman and you share it out to the world now people start commenting you would have good comments you have bad comments but whatever you read begins to influence your decisions and if naturally you would make a decision as IK on in your own mental state 
now you'll be forced to make a decision influenced by the comments that people have influenced you with. That's two. And three is the fact that um, so many people are so much into what the world will think of them, not what not what the family is, not the family values anymore. A man is busy thinking about how his how the world will see him as the alpha, how the world will see him as you know a good husband. And he's not trying to fix issues within his home. He's trying to paint a picture out to the world. Same thing with the woman. And when you're too busy living for the world, you now stop living for yourself. You're either living for yourself or living for the world. So when you're living for the world, you're not living for yourself. And when you're not living for yourself, you begin to please the world at against yourself. And when you're not living for yourself, those things that are, that should stand as the foundation, the fundamental parts that creates this stable relationship begins to break. You have broken walls and crashes. So, yeah, social media has um, influenced a lot of relationships to go sour, but I believe in time, this shall soon pass. Um, people say it's in every man's DNA, but I don't think so. Um, it's a mindset. If you hang around people that cheat, you would probably become a cheater. If you hang around people that are faithful to their women, they would influence you to be faithful to your woman. So it's a mindset. Um, I don't think every man cheats, and um, I don't think it's a word that we should use. Every man cheats. No, I mean, there are people that are faithful to their wives, not just because of they have to be faithful to their wife, but because it's a spiritual thing. There are people that just want, that don't believe in sharing their body with just everyone, you know. So let's take that word, every man cheats, and let's have some men cheat because they want to cheat. Same way every, you can't say every woman cheats, but there are women out there that do cheat, and they cheat because they want to cheat. It's a personal decision. I don't see a reason why I should. You know, um, yeah, for me, I, I looked for a woman that has everything I want, you know, from beauty to brains, to companionship, friendship. I'm more about um, building my family, building my life, and building a future for me and my interior from my um, internal family and extended family. So the, I really don't have that time. I'm always on set, I'm always working, and the little time I do have, I spend with family. brother, friend, um, and I was happy to see him tied in up with his girlfriend for two reasons. One is because every time myself, Yomi and Alex go out, I'm the only married one. So it feels kind of awkward. When I say I want to go home by 1 a.m., that can be like, I'm going to waiting with this now, you know. But now, if I say let's go home by 1 a.m., Yomi will be like, yes, 1 a.m. So Alex will be the one still you know, like, you know, so we're trying to get Alex to get married. But that aside, um, my advice to Yomi and his wife is marriage comes with a lot of baggage. Marriage comes with um, a lot of promises and a lot of failures. failures. Um, um, when you get married to a woman, you begin to see this woman every single day. She begins to share your personal space. She begins to make a chance with you. So, so many other times the devil tries to creep in um, a reason for you to take this person for granted. Never take your woman for granted, no matter what. Always live with the fact and realization that your woman is the only one single life decision that you made by yourself. You didn't choose the family that you would belong to. You were born into the family. You don't choose the day you die. You don't choose your child. Your child comes to life. But you choose the woman you will spend your life with. You choose the woman that will give birth to your children. You choose a woman that you want to call your queen. Now, if you choose a woman that you want to call your queen, every other woman in this planet is under her. There is no woman existing that should be more than this person that you regard as your queen. That's what I do. I mean, I don't care who you are. Even if you're the Beyonce's of this world or whatever, I don't see any woman in this world more than my woman. My woman is my queen. And my queen is... I don't use words that would put me in trouble. <laughs> but yeah, she's my, my, my woman is my queen, so I said my queen and that's it. And secondly, whatever issues you have in your home, don't share it with 
anybody. You don't need anybody's advice. You don't need anybody's advice because nobody knows your wife better than you. Nobody knows you, the husband, better than your wife that shares that space with you. And when the cookies crumble, she's the only person that would really, really, really be there for you. So you need to understand that nobody should advise you about your home. You should be the one advising yourself about your home and your woman. So when you have issues with her, talk to her and settle it with her. You will not have rosy moments all the time. You would have your down moments. You will have the times when you would fight, the times that you would raise your voice at each other. But always remember that the things that you say when you're angry are 90% the wrong things. So always choose your quiet moments when you're calm to address issues. Thank you very much. Well, I've not faced it, so I, I, I can't sit down on this chair and say I can forgive it. But if I found out that my woman slept with someone she had no feelings for, it just happened, we just had sex. My pride would be hot, but I, I would easily forgive her than, you know, if I found out that she's dating somebody like proper dating, traveling trips here and there, you know, seeing themselves every now and then, all of that. But you can't really sit down and share and say you can forgive this or forgive that. That's the truth because when you're faced with these life situations, then that's when you know what to do. And that's when you really realize that, you know, those things that you felt you could tackle in a particular way was not really the way it seemed to be. Well, I believe that we are in a world where Everyone should stand for himself. Uh, a man should work hard and make something out of his life. So should a woman work hard and make something out of her life. This has nothing to do with your husband or wife. This is individual fulfillment. Uh, as a woman, you went to school, you've passed through a lot in life. You should achieve everything that you have set out to achieve in life. So should a man. But the only thing I think only time I think I'll have an issue with anything is when a woman forgets her place in the home. The Bible says it, that the woman is subject to the man. The woman, the man is the head of the home. Even when you're taking your marital vows, I mean, it's stated there that a woman is under the man and as such should respect the man who is the captain of the ship. So using the strength as a woman, strength as a woman is, comes in, in that weakness. A man has his strength in his fist, a woman has her strength in her mouth. So as a woman, when you're calm and not challenging your man's ego, you can get anything you want. Um, making money in different ways as a businessman. Uh, I have other businesses and I mean I would definitely take them more serious and as much as possible try to to build them. This is a must watch movie. It's hitting the cinemas on the 20th of October 2017. Go and watch it with a friend, a friend's friend, a friend's 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 friend, 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 and friend's friend. Family, brother, sister, whatever you got, just go watch Excess Luggage and I promise you, you would not regret it. Hi guys, my name is IK Obod, an Hollywood actor and producer and you're watching Broadway TV. Stay blessed.